Hi everybody. November the 24th, confusing times in the world. There is bad news and there's good news. There's no point in me asking you which you prefer first because I can't hear you, but I'm going to give you the good news and the bad news at the same time. The world is changing. And what we have here is a representation of the planet in a what's called a Mercata uh, scale. So some of the, the places look a little bit bigger than they actually are in real life. Um, why I've put this here today is for all of you watching this video, no matter where you are, um, something somewhere here affects you. And what I'm going to try and explain to you now is an overview of the confusion that has been deliberately prepared and seeded into you like a mind virus by the New World Order, the neocons, the globalist agenda, whatever you wish to call them, there is a play in, 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 in theatre here. The theatre is this place here and you are watching the theatre because you are totally in a reactive position. Most of you are reacting to what's happening. Very few are, are what's called um, living actors producing something. You're led to believe that you are producing by so-called dem democratic uh, institutions that supposedly listen to you. But in reality, you know, once the vote has been cast, then the politicians do whatever they are told in turn as the puppets of the puppet master and those who are controlling the time agendas that are running here. So what I want you to do today, I make no apologies by, about the length of this video. It is intricate. It uh, will need you to pause and go back on the video. But for all of you out there that have a brain cell left in your head, then the truth about what I'm going to expose here and show you today should be very illuminating. Um, so what I'm going to start with is the current situation in the world today. We have this big bogeyman being presented to the world stage, to the theatre, by whom? By the media, by the propagandizing machinery that tries to portray this country here as it's historically been uh, portrayed, especially from the United States um, here for the last 50, 70 years as the evil monster, the communist um, satanic organization which challenges um, global capitalism, okay? So Russia is portrayed as the bad guy and what we have at the moment is repeated action here from this, this region which is the Ukraine constantly pouring weaponry now into, the, into Russia and Vladimir Putin is threatening nuclear war because he's claiming, in effect, that there is a proxy war going on here and it is, in effect, the NATO members that are causing these problems. Very factually correct. Nobody can deny that the United States um, is providing arms, is providing weapons and missiles. The UK, France, the European Union are all selectively now providing aid to Ukraine to supposedly create this war. So what's going on is why is it important? It's important by the fact that this area here also has a little region called the Crimea. So you've got the Crimea and you've got Ukraine and the Crimea is important because it has always been an area that has been fought after. The Ottoman Empire, um, which was obviously an Islamic empire, controlled this region for a long, long time until the uh, latter part of the 1900s, the Russians took control of it. But it's always been a, a, a key area because what it does is if Russia control the Crimea, why they seized the Crimea, is that they need from here into the Black Sea and through what's called the Bosphorus, yeah, um, they need access to what's called warm water ports. Once the, um, the Soviet Navy can pass through here, particularly through the Bosphorus here, 
and this, this region here, then they are now into the Mediterranean and can control massive areas here with the might of their superpower navy. So that's why it's very important that if this is restricted, as it is at the moment, because typically um, NATO joined the, sorry, um, Turkey and Greece in 1952, I think it was, joined NATO at the same time on the same day. And it just so happens, though, that NATO, therefore with Turkey, controls that area. So what we're looking for then is in order for Vladimir Putin and the Russian Navy to access the Mediterranean, there's got to be what's called the fall of Constantinople. So why that is important is this is a biblical end of days prophecy that is relevant to all religions of the world. So this is why it's a key area, because typically um, Nikita Khrushchev, for some very strange reason, in 1950, I think it was 1950, I can't remember exactly, so somebody please look it up for me. Nikita Khrushchev handed the Crimea, control of the Crimea, over to Ukraine, and then when Ukraine, when the Soviet Union finally disintegrated and the Russian Confederation took over, that then was in effect a territory owned by the Ukraine. But mainly the Crimea has Russian people, spe Russian speakers, and a Russian majority. So this is why there's this confrontation here because that's the key area. Now, the other thing I'm wanting people to realize here full well is that most people think, ah, well, okay, Russia's over here and the United States are over here, two arch enemies that have always been contending as superpowers on the global stage. But what people forget is that if I was a Russian and I was looking to invade the United States or create some type of scenario that seemed like an invasion, what I would do is I wouldn't really think I had to move through Europe and then confront it with long-range intercontinental ballistic missiles. What I would do is I would travel around about 68, I think it is, could be a little bit more, uh, nautical miles to bridge here, the Bering Straits, and a voila, I'm immediately in Alaska with a very easy run into the United States. So when people in the United States think about, oh, what's going on in Europe? That's, that's uh, almost in, an, in, in another world from us. It's, it's a massive distance away. I think many of them forget that there is this anomaly here and it would take well, it wouldn't really take a lot to suspect if you believe that things were planned ahead of time to wonder why this piece here of Canada was succeeded and is owned by the United States when there is an absolute remote aspect to, to, to any, any, any geographical reason for them to be connected. So, that's where we're up to, and this is why this world stage is so problematic at the moment, is because there's a lot of agendas going on. There is a lot of uh, propaganda being force-fed onto you to paint an end-of-times scenario. This end-of-times scenario, to the greatest extent, is all based around the Middle East, specifically in the area of Jerusalem. Um, that means Israel. That means why the state of Israel was originally um, put on the books, I think it was in 1879, when the, um, the um, Zionist conference was held in Basel in Switzerland with a view to setting up the state of Israel. Not long after that came um, Marx and Engels in 1948, uh, their, um, the, their, their work on um, 
not only Das Kapital, but the, um, the Communist Manif Manifesto, which didn't catch on till around about 1917, when we had then the Bolshevik Revolution. And so what that's brought us to is, it's brought us to a scenario now where we are, if, as is expected, the Soviet Union, oh, sorry, yeah, the, the Russian Federation manages to take its shipping out here, it then becomes immediately a real nuclear superpower and has got control coming down here to Lebanon, Syria, um, and Israel. So this is why this is important, because where this is going, ask yourselves, where is the agenda running on this um, as far as mainstream media's diktat which is being presented by the handlers in the background who handle the, the front people, the establishment that you see as possibly running the world, because whether you like it or not, whether you realize it or not, and uh, I try to emphasize that this information that I'm giving to you is genuine, it's accurate, it's truthful, and you need to start paying attention to it because there are certain things that... Uh, can make your, your coming years a lot more easier than they currently are. And to that extent, I'm going to now um, take this away because I think I've covered most of the things that I need to do, which is really just to say we've got this, this central location here and we've got this massive um, now BRICS block, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and... Uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, but China and India combined contribute to about 2.8, let's call it 3 billion of the global population. So that's a, a massive percentage. You've got the Russians, I think, with about 450 million. So you've got a very heavy investment here um, of... of uh, of human energy that is going to be unleashed. So I'm going to take this away now and I'll hand it to my technical assistant and I'm straight back on. So what I'm going to try and cover for you now um, and you don't need to take notes because you've got the rewind or pause function on your video. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put in perspective what's actually being uh, engineered here. The main protagonists behind it are what's called the Chabas. These are a, uh, a, a orthodox sect within the Mossad, the Israeli secret or should we say intelligence services. And their prime directive, these are what's called uh, Lubavitch um, Akhenazic Jews, okay? Their prime directive is to create an end of times scenario in preparation for the installation of the new world order, a global agenda, not only of finances, but more pertinently to you, though you think not, is a, a religious coming together because of a narrative which they will indoctrinate into you by these various players here, that one, you are incapable of looking after yourselves. Now, that might not be evident from the fact that you think, well, I can wash and I can shave and I can run the car and I can make sure my children get educated. It's not to the extent of that, it's almost from a nationalistic perspective where uh, independent nation states seem to be constantly quarreling with each other and there's always war. And that's exactly what we have in front of us right now. We have these various um, saviors. Um, I haven't... Uh, we've got these... saviors, or these messiah-type 
individuals being presented as remedies for certain scenarios. So bear in mind, if they want you, it's like a bull in a field. If you imagine there is a gate in a field and you want the bull to go through that gate, you take the bull and you lead him to the gate and it'll refuse to go through the gate. However, if you walk the bull right the way around the field, when you get to where you want to exit, he will just walk straight through the gate for you. Same scenario if you've got multiple gates, but you need to go through one. So what is happening here is the agenda is being uh, switched, confused, and it's going to make it so confusing for you that in the end, when they've swapped the beans under the cup, that you're totally confused and continuously pick the wrong cup. But for them, you'll be picking the right cup. So how have we got this, this unfolding? The, the, the main thing to look at um, from a, shall we say, um, an, an anthropophic, anthropomorphic um, situation here is people do, regardless of what society tends to project these days, people do believe in something. They believe in life after death. They believe in maybe extraterrestrials. They believe in God. They believe in Jesus, Buddha, um, Vishnu, Krishna. Um, and the main distinction we have here is that Christians, Islamists, and Jewish, or the Jews, all believe in an end of times prophecy, okay? That accounts for a great percentage of the population of religious believers. The Buddhists, they believe in something similar to what the Hindus believe, and that is that there is a cyclical nature to time, and therefore, we are coming up to the end of a cycle. We're coming up to the end of what's called Kali Yuga. And at the end of that point, then um, it's in preparation for the next unfolding of the various or four cycles of time. Okay? So this is the setting for this end of days globalist roadshow. So you've got now the setup. It's like if anybody's seen that, um, that film, um, it's about a, a pair of confidence tricksters. Um, it was Robert Redford and Paul Newman, and it was an incredible um, uh, movie where the idea is that when you've been conned, it's done so well that you don't even realize you were, you were conned. You were, you were just so happy and so relieved at the end that you got away with um, probably not being put in jail or, or something else. So how this is, is planning is that as far as the eschatological perspectives of Islam and Christianity are concerned, and also for all Orthodox Jews and all probably Jews living in Israel, and this end of times predicts the Christ, the Antichrist, and some uh, objective called the prince, which is part of a, a, a deception plan, that it all takes part as far as the Islamists and the Jews are concerned. It takes place in Damascus, in Syria. Yeah, so that is Damascus. So that's why Assad's regime protected in most part by the Russians, um, are, are making sure that Syria stays as a, a reasonably uh, protected zone in the Middle East. You couldn't say the, fact, the same thing about Lebanon. You can't say the same thing necessarily about Jordan. You can't say, for example, the same thing about Libya. Libya was thrown to the dogs um, the Russians refused the veto in the, the UN, and that allowed, therefore, 
the British and the Americans and the French to bomb the hell out of uh, Gaddafi. Um, one of the reasons probably why that happened is they needed the position or positioning of the next door neighbor from Libya um, so that from the south would be the Sudan and it would be then a possibility for fulfilling of the biblical prophecy for the end of times, which states that Israel, before the war of Armageddon, needs to be in control of all that land from the Euphrates into and including Egypt, with 80 million, I think, maybe 90 million now, I don't know, people in Egypt. Um, how do they do that? Well, if they can uh, attack from all sides, including the um, the Mediterranean, then there's a chance of them actually capturing Egypt. Um, happened in the Six Days War before. So, this is the, the overview that I am trying to paint here for you. Um, the Christians believe in the end of days, the second coming of Christ. The Islamists fully believe that there will be an end of days battle and it's mainly portrayed probably as a battle between good and evil, the dark against the... There is also an activity going on here, um, an undertow of activity, where the Islamists are being led astray by fanatical Sharia-based Islamic infiltrates supplied with not only weaponry but funding by the CIA and the various uh, organizations around here. And that is to portray um, the Islamists as being so emphatically not wanted on the voyage that when eventually maybe there is a biblical uh, battle at the end of days between the Christendom and the Islamic, um, um, should we say, Mohammedan empires, that when they are defeated, nobody will give a damn about it because they were troublemakers anyway. This is probably one of the reasons that there is so much covert, clandestine cover-up about these um, individuals, usually migrants, um, that have been brought into Europe, into the UK, um, and are allowed to commit these, these crimes or these uh, atrocities, whether real, faked, or imagined, in order to make the people so angry with, let's say, the, the general content of Islam, that um, they're all too eager to see the back end of it. It's also very, very pointedly, interesting for you to be told or to know that in these countries like Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates, um, none of these countries will allow um, ISIS or ISIL or whatever you want to call them, these radical Islamic groups groups to proliferate or even have a base. Ask yourselves, why not? The obvious reason is these are tools, these are staged uh, weapons, whereby, for example, I think it was in 20, 2016, uh, when did 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 2018, I'm not sure, Barack Obama was supposed to be bombing the daylights out of ISIS, um, looking to eradicate them, wipe them off the face of the earth. Not only did he not do it, but they came back even better funded with more money and with and better equipment. So the lies that are being propagated all the time are there to set the scene. They are setting you up in order to make the next part of the agenda much easier. It is a little bit like what David Icke often refers to, this problem, reaction, solution, but on a, a layered level. So this is what we have here. We've got the Christians, the Islamists, the Jews, we've got the Buddhists, and we've got the Hindus. Now, many people say, oh, well, the Hindu, Hindus believe in reincarnation. 
they don't really believe in a, an end of times. However, they do. What they do believe is somebody called Lord Kalki, who is what's called the tenth, um, the, the the tenth incarnation of Vishnu, and the tenth incarnation of um, Vishnu comes at the end of the cycle of Kali Yuga, which is the downturn cycle before the next cycles begin. And he's portrayed to the Hindus as riding a white horse with a sword in his hand, not unlike the Christian depiction of the, um, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So the Buddhists believe in uh, the coming of Lord Maitreya. So whether you believe it or not, the few hundred uh, people who watch my videos, that isn't the point. What you need to understand is there is a, a Christic viewpoint and there's this anti-Christic viewpoint which is setting one, one school off against the other. So what we've got here at the moment is this area let's say, the West. The West is being portrayed and propagandized very, very slowly by people like Donald Trump and his Q movement before when he comes out with the swamp must be drained. It's a PSYOP operation, which initially, I admit, I fell for because I thought Perhaps, maybe just perhaps, there is some good wind blowing and there are these um, white hats and there is going to be some type of intervention. But from what I can see and what I should have stayed with is this, this uh, theatre play has been too long planned, too well established for the likes of some wild card coming out of New York changing it. If they wanted him dead because he was such a maverick and independent thinker, they would have had him dead within the first week. And as for the so-called miracle of the right ear, I would certainly suggest everybody look and think to themselves, well, hang on, what was he being set up for? Why was he lauded after it? Why was he uh, portrayed in lots of media presentations, especially between uh, on the public, Republican side, um, as, as being like a saviour, um, like a messiah, and it was God's intervention that prevented him being killed. You know, he had a high-velocity round. Not only it didn't miss, it actually hit him and would impart such kinetic energy on that type of thing. He wouldn't be walking around today, so we've got the... Well, he wouldn't be walking around today with a perfectly in touch uh, and... Uh, um, what well, you know, almost perfect, not almost, perfect looking ear, but everybody has, has, has just seemingly forget these things and that, that's a big problem in itself for me because I can't understand why more people don't speak of it. So, Christ, Antichrist, and we have a, a two-stage play which I'm going to run through for you in a minute. So, in the West, what's being set up for you is this discontentment, this um, disgust with this satanic, uh, consumer-based, um, Luciferian agenda where everything is just about money, there's decadence everywhere, there is, there's homosexuality, there is perversion, there is all manner of debauchery going on, um, people are getting rich at the expense of the poor. It's a failed system. And the people being portrayed as being very, very evil because they're trying to do lots of nasty things to you are these guys here, wherever you would find them. And these organizations here, uh, World Bank, Bank for International Settlements, the West generally, the Council of Foreign Relations, the SWIFT system, because it funds black operations and it funds money to terrorists, yet the bankers pretend they don't know. So it's a children of Lucifer type of woke BLM agenda that is being woven onto people in the hopes that they'll build up to such a level of 
frenzy or frenetic energy that they'll say, we've had enough with that. And those saviors or messiahs that are being portrayed as wanting to end that, to make sure there is no um, uh, abduction or trafficking of children, um, that these underground bases where children are hidden and so-called uh, mistreated are located by Trump and his military commandos. What's come out of it? Nothing. Yeah? There's 8 million children go missing every year and I don't see Donald Trump and his cohorts making much difference there. It's all jam tomorrow. And that's the value of the politician to the handler and the puppet master class, how long can the phase be kept until the people become so disillusioned they have to kick them out? Whether it's uh, Gordon Brown, whether it's uh, John Major, whether it's the Clintons, whether it's Cameron or Boris Johnson, it doesn't matter, Merkel, they've got a shelf life. Then the next one comes in to take over. So what we've got here is these, these people here, from Putin, from Trump, from Xi and Modi and Netanyahu are all singing from the same hymn book that they are very, very much into restoring nationalism. And Putin is regarded as, um, as a savior of the Russian empire in the fact that he's got the Russian Orthodox Church and he is a great campaigner for um, attacking the West, openly exposing and commenting on the, the satanic practices of the elites of the West. So Putin's being set up as a Christian messiah or a savior. Donald Trump, the savior of America, that's how he stands at the moment, just uh, weeks away from his inauguration. That's where we've got Trump, but this organization very strangely just simply disappeared after his first, or after his first um, uh, um, stint as president. But we've got Trump being now positioned as a big buddy of Putin, joined together at their hip, both professing to a return of values, a return to sort of Christian ideals, a return to good old solid capitalism and doing away with immigration, which the Soviet Union doesn't have any problem with at all. You've got then Xi of China, uh, all, all seeing G, G. X and one is actually 11 uh, for a numerological perspective. So that's a sign of, of who this, this character is. So Xi is in charge of about 1.45, 1.5 billion Chinese, and he's possibly in a role um, of extending this sort of, I don't know whether you could say that there's any religion, but typically um, Buddhism was thriving. The Shinto religion um, was very prevalent in China prior to the end of the, the Second World War. Um, so you've got Xi here, who's in, obviously, a strong relationship with Putin because they're in BRICS and they're both supposedly communist countries. And then we have people like Netanyahu, though there is an ICC arrest warrant on him. I don't know why that would be at the moment, but Netanyahu, Netanyahu here is there as also a savior for Israel. And these are the parties that get put into place on the other side, we're all taught to try and hate the Obamas, the Gates, the Fauci's, Starmer, Sunak, here, all these organizations, these groups here, and all of this stuff here is all signs of um, a corruption of ideals of former times and how we should live. In effect, what it is, is a covert genocide or humanicide project to make everybody under so much threat that they'll want something something different so that's where it 
pulls us into, and what we have then is people like these characters portrayed as some sort of, especially at the moment, let's use just the Musk example with Trump, um, not enough for Musk to be supposedly the world's richest man, not for anyone to question, well, hang on, he was in touch with, he was a former, he actually founded these companies. Um, he funded PayPal. Then he founded the big drilling company. Then he's found SpaceX. Then he's founded Neuralink. He's founded Tesla. Um, and there's one I'm missing. Um, X. So what's What's going on there? I mean, it's just off the chart incredible that this guy, um, seemingly a friend of the people and someone who's designated as a maybe backup savior to, with his, his supposedly high IQ and mental capacity to save, to save America or to save the, the world uh, from, from all this confusion, um, You've got these characters here, Zuckerberg, Bezos, richest people colluding together as millionaires or billionaires. They're only the front men for the operation. They are just there for, to take the flak if anything goes wrong, and they're expendable, and they know it. So we've got then people like Farage, who is at the moment on an ascendancy. He is probably, like Trump, a covert Jesuit um, schooled individual who has been set up to become, because his talents have been recognized and so he's been brought into the fold. Um, how you detect all of these things is that even when Trump is now coming into... Um, um, into office again, there's lots of things Trump could have brought out. Uh, he could have brought out um, stuff about Kennedy. He could have brought out stuff about that. He could have brought out um, information concerning disclosure the Disclosure Project, but he didn't. He's threatened and promised a lot, but he's not delivered. And so from your perspective, you have to recognize this is the play. This is where it's going. Putin for phase one is going to be portrayed as a savior, but he's going to be then recognized later uh, as someone who deceived the public. That's the way they'll play it. Trump, in alliance with him, um, these people like here, uh, Nahendra Modi, a savior of the Hindu population, 1.5 billion of them. Um, Farage, maybe for the UK in, in a little while, but not for now. Um, Erdogan, massive player because... Turkey are in NATO, however, it's an Islamic country and it controls Istanbul or Constantinople. And so if Istanbul, Constantinople goes, then the, the Bosphorus is open and these, these straits allow the Soviet Navy into the Mediterranean unhindered and from that point on, this is probably the end of time scenario that we're, we're looking at. So that's the setup for part one, that Putin and Trump and Modi and Xi are all portrayed as being um, saviors for a system that is defunct and not going anywhere. After that, what we are in all probability going to get is an intervention because this doesn't play out as far as the, the eschatological perspective of Christians, Islamists, and Jews. It doesn't play out on that scale 
until this battle for the end of days, which is the Battle of Armageddon. And at that Battle of Armageddon, what we supposedly have for the Christians and also for the Islamists is the second coming, the coming of the Christ. Now, how do they get away with that? Because what they're looking to do is to unify this world series of religions, which you could look at as nationalistic religions. They want them all amalgamated into a supranational or unipolar identity. How would they do that? Well, what they will do, as Werner von Braun said as his statement before he died, the final card they will play is the extraterrestrial agenda. And this is why all of you out there are totally missing the point about Area 52 www.area52.life Go and have a look at the website. For the love of God, consider joining it or registering. It is there to help you avoid or see through or invoke protection at these end of times that are fast barreling down on us. And you may be the type of person that says, oh, well, we've seen all this before. You know, there's always a threat of war. This Middle East thing has been going on for 40 years. It's actually been going on for 4,000 years. However, there are individuals out there. The agenda is through the the situation in Ukraine, through maybe not allowing Trump to take the presidency in January because they will invoke a, 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 a war situation and under the War Powers Act then the, the existing government structure stays in place. If that happens then Trump doesn't come in and what happens is the current incumbents take over and we we have this, this World War III of a nuclear perspective, possibly CGI uh, 9-11 2.0 created, but also it could well be a false flag scenario that makes the whole world realize that, oh, it's all gone very, very badly now, and Putin has launched a, um, a, an attack either maybe into Poland or into the Ukraine. So that's what you're looking at. And you have these major nuclear powers here. Um, and India, a nuclear power, possibly being threatened from Pakistan, an Islamic country it's always had quite a, a serious uh, um, contention with. So this is really what I'm trying to portray. Um, the portray is end of times scenario whereby the, the play through an immense budget, infinite budget, an immense amount of money that's been sequestrated by the military industrial complex that Kennedy and Eisenhower and many others have warned you about in the past have the ability these days, I assure you, as if you've not seen any of these holographic displays in Dubai on the buildings and in the air, they have the ability on the silver chemtrail-laden skies that they've happily got you to pay for with your air miles over the last 30 years. They've got a beautiful silver particle screen to project their holographic imagery on. So the first stage of this is probably a visual arrival 
probably synthetically generated, plus being backed up with the Skunk Works Area 51 organization of man-made um, UFOs populated by um, hybrids or cyborg or holographic men in black type beings, which will then intervene on the basis that um, you are incapable of looking after yourselves. We've come to look after you. We are your brothers and we have, and then they will, they will ladle out some type of um, history, um, a lot of truth wound in a lot of deception, um, particularly great on that are the Zeta, the Zeta Gray from Orion, uh, or the Zeta Zephelium from Ipax in Lao, which is in the or or Orion system. Um, they usually work hand in hand with the, the Dracon or the, those types. Um, but overall, the agenda is currently being manipulated to the greatest extent by the Anunnaki. Yeah, and if you don't know who the Anunnaki are, uh, just go and look at the biblical references in the Old Testament to the Nephilim. Um, and these beings seem to be very big. And if you've heard of the Battle of David and Goliath, you might wonder what David was actually um, battling and so miraculously defeated. Um, so that's, that's what we have playing out. And this, this battle, this end of times battle, is what they want you to suck in. And I believe what would happen then is that the scenario will be then a, a switch towards even a global age, or they will then reveal that these so-called um, saviors weren't saviors at all, that these were deceiving you, and they now will give you the true picture of what's really going on, and they will reveal lots of technologies that will help you if we have the time for this. Um, those special technologies will be things like cures for cancer, there will be free energy, they will be um, yeah, almost uh, everything to make your life easier. However, it will be a golden cage they will be stepping you into, not a uh, an iron barred one like you seem to be living in now. Um, and so that's just about as far as I want to go, but I'm just going to conclude with checking my notes to try and make sure that I, I haven't forgotten any major points that I wanted to, to bring out. Um, the Save me wiping that off. What I'll do is I'll just put this this piece of paper up. Uh, what we've got finally is this, um, let's call it, atheistic Bolshevik communism plus Islam tied together. And why it's important to mention this, you should not forget that virtually every main leader from Trudeau through uh, Rishi Sunak, through Keir Starmer, through Putin, through Ahern in New Zealand, through Macron, through Theresa May, through Tony Blair, um, all of these individuals all went through as young global socialists with the uh, World Economic Forum. So no coincidence that these people get into power because they're plants. And the reason that this works so well is they have tried deliberately to take people away from Christendom to any belief in religion or Christ or um, being anything other than just a speck on a radar screen that comes for 80 years and then ticks off like that. This is why you've got this 
strange set of socialist dependency that has infected the world where all of these states are there trying to help you. It's the state that gives. It's the state that looks after you. It's the state handout. It's the state this. But it's the state that tells you what price you have to pay for your electric. It's the price what you have to pay for your beer. The price of everything is controlled by this. So it's atheistic. It's Bolshevik communism. And these are the people who funded or started this Russian revolution in 1917. It then cascaded from, from Russia cascaded then into China via Mongolia, the border, and then it took up residence. So after the war, we had two major areas. Prior to that, the Chinese were predominantly Shinto Buddhists. They were um, very peaceable and happy and had not this type of communism that's been inflected onto them by Xi. And what's happening here is this Islamic Judaic confrontation between Enki and Enlil, uh, or his previous name was EA. Uh, that's how you get the earth because he had dominion over it. Um, this is just a rehash of an old conflict that probably ended around about 9000 BC between these uh, fighting groups or the, 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 uh, the families that were left behind um, and why we have this, this scenario now where we have these chosen people vying against these other almost identical group um, but it's really just that one one lot followed one brother the other followed another brother and so what we've got now is the end of times playbook which shows this um, this vindictive ancient um, vengeful god with a beard Anu taking on and making retribution for um, for the sins of man. So just before I go, we've got there for, um, just to say, Modi um, as Lord Kalki, the Hindu Messiah. We've got Putin and Trump probably being presented co-jointly as a society, as, as a saviors of Christendom. Um, we've got these propagandizing uh, elites here. Um, for the return of this Kabbalistic God that is being the preparation for the end of time scenario which will take place in Israel with Damascus and Syria being that point where they come together for the initiation of this uh, battle. And not necessarily Megiddo. I know some people say it's got to be Megiddo where the final confrontation takes place. So first phase then will be this revelation then of an antichrist followed by this phase where the second coming of the Christ um, with the ET probably in interaction will be what they want to sell you on. And this second coming on the clouds will be sufficient for the Hindus, for example, and the Buddhists to accept that as either Lord Maitreya or Krishna coming again. And with that scenario, they hope to have the human populations that are still living by then, don't forget, um, lock, stock and barrel in their hand. OK, so thank you very much. And uh, comment on what you want to hear more of. But finally, just saying that this isn't conjecture. This is how it is playing out. And if you cannot see it, if you can't see the fact that this roadshow, especially as a Islamist Christian cycle of confrontation is real, then I don't know where you've been for the last 20 or 30 years. And I don't know what you think about the migration of uh, the so-called um, Islamic, in many instances, lunatics 
or the media portraying them as um, committing these knife attacks and bombings and whatever. You need a one-way ticket to the moon, I'd suggest, and wait it out there. Okay, so thank you.